are here on the 9th of September 2014 to celebrate 21 years since the late Norris McWhirter and myself laid before the courts constitutional treason charges against government ministers for signing one of the major constitution-destroying treaties, the Maastricht Treaty of 1992 turned by Parliament into statute in 1993. The principles of Magna Carta were strong and sure, however compromised they have been since by many corrupt and treasonous governments in this country and around the world. No arrest except under the law. No punishment except under the law. No possession of property except by due process of the law. No taxation without due process of the law. And any fines proportionate to offences. And the freedom of the Church of England, or indeed the freedom of individuals to leave the kingdom. As the late Lord of Appeal, Lord Denning said, these were the principles against arbitrary despotic rule by kings, or as we call the king today, the state, the government. They guaranteed the freedoms of free men, and much later, those who were not free men also achieved these principles of protection against the king. So in September 1993, Norris McWhirter and I laid informations, as they are called, under misprision of treason before the courts of England. We accused the ministers, Heard and Maud, who went to Brussels to sign the Maastricht Treaty, one of the most constitution-destroying treaties ever signed by British government. We accused them of treason because under British law, under statutes in force, anyone who undermines the Constitution of the United Kingdom and its Parliament and its lawmaking and its people is guilty of treason. These accusations were not mere political swearing at people we disagreed with. These were factual, detailed legal cases based on the law of the country. The acts of parliament and case law which those ministers contravened included Magna Carta itself, the Act of Settlement, the Coronation Oaths Act, the Treason Acts of course, and case law which prohibited government passing laws repealing important statutes without express permission of Parliament. It also referred to R versus Thistlewood 1820, which said that anyone who undermined the Constitution of the United Kingdom was guilty of treason. So these were the accusations which we made in detail. And of course, they came eventually to the Crown Prosecution Service, who spent many months looking at them until a question was asked in Parliament as to why it was taking so long. The accusations were, of course, constitutional, but the crime itself came under the Criminal Acts. One of the important principles laid down by Lord Justice McGarry in a famous case was that Parliament is omnipotent in everything except in the removal of its omnipotence. And, of course, the Maastricht Treaty was not the first time that the British government had signed away sovereign rights of our parliament and our people. The first was in 1971, when Edward Heath signed the Accession Treaty to the European Union. Even though he had been warned in detail in advance by an important paper written by the then Lord Chancellor, Lord Kilmuir, who said that this would be the first time that the British Parliament had ever undertaken such a removal of constitutional rights. 
the Kilmuir Letter, as it was called, in which Lord Kilmuir, the Lord Chancellor, advised Heath of the horrendous steps that he was about to take, was covered up for 30 years. Only in the 1990s did it come to light, did the government publish the contents of the Kilmuir Letter. This shows the deceit and cover-up of these constitutional outrages committed by Edward Heath in 71 and by every other British government since then in sacrificing the British people's sovereign rights on the altar of the European Union. In public response, the Crown Prosecution Service said that if there had been any treason, which of course they did not admit, then it was perfectly legal treason because the relevant act in 1993 ratifying the treaty was approved by Parliament. Because of the Maastricht Treaty, which was passed into law in 1993, the Queen of our country is no longer a Queen. She's no longer a sovereign. She's a suzerain. She's beholden to others, as indeed we are her subjects. The true sovereigns in a democracy are the voters, the people. But today, the sovereigns, the subjects of the Queen, do not make their own laws. They cannot repeal their own laws. They do not decide who enters the United Kingdom. They cannot decide where the boundary of the United Kingdom is. It is a complete betrayal of all the principles of Magna Carta, to which King John was forced to sign by the barons of England. From Annick in the north to Winchester in the south, they came here to set down principles of freedom and just government. But today those principles and freedoms have been largely destroyed by a series of governments, but in particular all those governments who since Heath in 1971 have signed European treaties which have fatally undermined the constitution of the British people. The cases came before the Crown Prosecution Service and ultimately the government's lawyer, the Attorney General. The Attorney General, who was involved in approving the signing of treaties, then became the judge in these cases which accused the government of undermining our constitution. He therefore became a complete contradiction of the important principle in English law, non judex in re sua. No one should be a judge in their own case. John did not come here voluntarily in 1215. He was forced to come here by the barons. He was forced to sign the principles of democracy and freedom, and freedom from oppression and arbitrary despotic rule. Today, the British people have a solution themselves. They can force their parliament, their MPs, their candidates at elections to retrieve everything they have given away. And it is perfectly possible to pass a simple act of parliament to get back what has been so treasonously betrayed. In the British Declaration of Independence, we have such a tool at general elections. And I hope you and the British people in general will look at the British Declaration of Independence because it reasserts all the freedoms and rights and self-government and sovereignty which most people believe we still have, but which, thanks to successive governments, have been effectively removed from us. It was on the 9th of September, 1993, that Norris McWhorter and I laid treason charges against government ministers for signing the Maastricht Treaty. All those charges were preceded with the following words, it being an offence at common law for a person who knows that treason is being planned or committed not to report the same as soon as he can to a justice of the peace, we therefore lay the following information. The accused in each of these eight cases were Douglas Hurd, the Foreign Secretary, and Francis Moore, the Financial Secretary to the Treasury, who signed the Maastricht Treaty on European Union. The first case was under Section 1 of the Treason Act, 1795, 
whereby it is illegal within the realm or without to devise constraint of the person of our sovereign, his heirs or successors. The sovereign, of course, is today the queen and parliament and government of the country. Article 8 of the Maastricht Treaty makes the queen, i.e. the head of our state, into a citizen of another country, the European Union, and therefore, as the treaty says, subject to the duties imposed thereby. She could be arraigned in her own courts and taxed. Therefore, our queen effectively is deposed as a sovereign, and we, of course, as a sovereign state, and she becomes a suzerain, that is, someone open to the and controlled by the power of another state. It is an offence under Section 1 of the Treason Act 1795 to engage in actions tending to the overthrow of the laws, government and happy constitution of the United Kingdom. Under the Maastricht Treaty, Heard and Maud had signed a treaty which allowed every person holding the nationality of a member state of the European Union to be a citizen of the European Union with the right to move and reside freely and vote in any member state. And the question as to which individuals had that right, in other words, were nationals of each member state, was left to each government of those member states. So the British people and Parliament had no longer the right to determine the numbers and identity of non-British nationals to whom other European states can give residence rights and voting rights in our country. Case 3. It is an offence under the Act of Settlement of 1700 for any person born out of the kingdoms of England, Scotland or Ireland or the dominions thereunto for them to be capable to be a member of either House of Parliament. And of course, according to R versus Thistlewood, to destroy the constitution of the country is an act of treason. But the Maastricht Treaty allowed every citizen of the European Union residing in a member state of which he is not a national to have the right to vote and stand as a candidate in the member state for the parliament of the country in which he happens to reside. Case 4. According to the Act of Settlement 1700, the laws of England are the birthright of the people. But according to Article 8 of the Maastricht Treaty, the British people without their consent had been made the citizens of the European Union with duties towards that union and taxable by that union, without further process of any kind in the Westminster Parliament. And according to Article 171, the British state can be forced to pay a monetary penalty to the European Union. Case 5. At her coronation in 1953, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II swore that she would govern her subjects according to their laws. And it is an offence under Section 1 of the Treason Act 1795 within the realm or without, to devise constraint of the person of our sovereign, his heirs or successors. But the Maastricht Treaty extended the powers of the European Commission, the European Court of Justice and the European Parliament to make and enforce in the United Kingdom laws which do not originate in the Westminster Parliament. And this loss of democratic rights was without the express consent of the British people. Case 6. It was established in 1932 in the case Vauxhall Estates versus Liverpool Corporation that no parliament may bind its successors. This is part of the British Constitution. And of course to destroy the Constitution is an act of treason according to R versus Thistlewood 1820. But according to Article Q of the Maastricht Treaty, that treaty is concluded for an unlimited period and 
from which there was no right of nor mechanism for secession. It is established by a statute in force, Magna Carta itself, in chapter 29, that, I quote, no freeman may be deceased of his liberties or free customs, nor will we pass upon him but by the law of the land. That the Treaty of European Union, signed by Hurd and Maud, deceased all free men of their liberties and free customs under the law of this country. By subjugating our government to the extension of the powers of the European Commission, the European Court and Parliament in which, of course, the United Kingdom had a minority of votes of 87 in 567 members. And, of course, under Article 192, our free men are open to be taxed without further process of the United Kingdom Parliament. And under Article 8, we became citizens of the European Union subject to the duties imposed thereby. Therefore, that treaty was a treasonable act. Case 8 is particularly relevant today as the Scots vote on independence. For the Maastricht Treaty was contrary to and inconsistent with the Union of Scotland Act 1706, whereby the people of the United Kingdom were to be represented by one and the same Parliament and none other, and that no alteration could be made in laws which diminish the rights of Scots. But under the Maastricht Treaty, the rule of a Parliament other than that of the Parliament of the United Kingdom was established, whereunder subjects within Scotland became subject to laws made in an assembly in which their representatives form a minority sevenfold more slender than in the Parliament of the United Kingdom established by that Act of Union in 1706. Therefore, that was also a treasonable act under British law. And of course, having signed so many European treaties which contradicted the Act of Union, that Act is effectively no longer in existence the British Parliament no longer exists as a sovereign parliament. Therefore, the Scots no longer have a parliament either. After these eight cases, the said Right Honourable Douglas Hurd and the said Right Honourable Francis Maud were guilty of treason. These charges, laid 21 years ago, remain today as a constitutional marker. They are relevant, they are unanswered, and they will be, I hope, a beacon of freedom in the future.